It ended last year with a bloody Tyler Hansborough. What will the ACC's best give us this year to end the regular season? Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, glad to be with you on CBSSports.com. Breaking down the best matchup of the weekend, sixth-ranked Duke home against the top team in the nation, that being UNC with the winner taking home the ACC regular season crown. And for more, we bring in CSTV Steve Lapis to break it down. And Steve, here we go again, but another chapter to the most heated rivalry in college basketball all but seven years since the ACC's inaugural season have one of these two teams won at least a share of the crown. Maybe there's a one seat on the line. You think it'll be a little bit intense on Saturday? Oh, there's no doubt. First of all, this game's always intense. It's probably one of the greatest rivalries in all of sports, let alone college basketball. Steve Duke won the first meeting by hitting 13 triples. They did it in the process. They won the game by 11, but Ty Lawson didn't play. He's healthy. He's played a couple of games. What aspect does he bring to this UNC team that may cause problems for Duke? Well, with all due respect to Quinton Thomas, he's done a, he did a great job when Ty Lawson was out, but he had six turnovers in that particular game. They need Ty Lawson to help them handle Duke's pressure. Duke averages nine steals a game. What they like to do is they like to pressure you, and you need your point guard to break, especially if they want to get up on you really tough. You need a guy who can go by them and break them down because that really does a job on that defense when somebody can go off the dribble like a Ty Lawson. And the other thing it does, he can do is he can get the ball to Hansborough. Now, Hansborough did have 28-18 and 18 the first game, which is one of the weaknesses of Duke. They don't really have a good big guy in there. But Ty Lawson, I think, makes a big difference. Yeah, he, you know, that is... That is an interesting point, Steve, because that has been the talk about Duke all year long and before the season that they, they could be out-muscled inside. But here we are with just this weekend to go before the ACC tournament, and they're still in the line for, for a one seed. Is that really a true criticism of Duke, that they're not physical enough inside? Well, I think it is a true criticism. Now, let's face it. They've had an unbelievable year because they really, really can shoot the ball. They're very quick. They can get to the basket, and they are obviously are a great defensive team. But... When they end up in a game where their pressure is not bothering somebody, that's when big guys really matter. If the game is going up and down and they're forcing steals, then it's not that big a deal. But if it becomes a half-court affair, the other team doesn't throw the ball away, now they need somebody to stop the other team's big guy. And that big guy in this game is Tyler Hansborough. Steve, you talked about him a little bit before with the 28 points. He's only 15 points away from becoming the sixth player in Tar Heels history to score 2,000. First ever North Carolina player as a junior. Uh, but now that Ty Lawson is back, do you expect the same type of numbers that we've been seeing the last six games where he's just been absolutely ridiculous? Yeah, I do. And as a matter of fact, you may even see him do better in some games because now he's got the guy out there that's going to be looking to deliver him the ball. Now, the one aspect that may cut down his productivity a little bit a little bit, is because now North Carolina may run a little bit more. And obviously, he's getting the ball. He's getting a rebound. He's going to be pitching it out to Lawson, and they may be gone without him on occasion. But when it comes to being in the half court, that kid is relentless. He will be there, and he will be all over the glass. Yeah, one coach earlier in the day told me he wished he could put Tyler Hansborough's effort into any body in the entire college game. I mean, because the guy is certainly that type of player that you certainly want. Uh, we mentioned this earlier. Duke hit 13 triples in the last game. North Carolina defensively. How do they have to adjust in this game? Well, the thing they have to do is they have to try and stop Duke off the dribble. Duke creates all those three-point shots by penetrating and kicking. And I think Roy Williams has a tough decision to make. You know, sometimes you can help too much on drivers. I think against Duke, I've always felt the key because I've played them a few times myself. Not that it was very, I was very successful at it. <laughs> I always felt the biggest key to Duke was don't let them make threes. If they make twos, they make twos. Don't help so much. Stay on the good three-point shooters. And they're so balanced. Seven different guys can score, and they can all hit threes, uh, Gerald Henderson being the worst. But the rest of the guys certainly can all hit from beyond the arc. Steve, it's the biggest game of the weekend. Who do you like? I'm going with Carolina. The revenge factor, Lawson being back. The game is at Duke, which, make, which makes it tough. I think they paid Duke back this weekend. All right. Steve Lapis, CSTV. Thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Folks, the game tips off at 9 p.m. Eastern Saturday night. And for more, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com and watch everything else all over the CBS Audience Network. And don't forget, NCAA March Madness On Demand is back this year. You can watch every game from the NCAA Championship live online for free. Be sure to avoid the lines on game day by signing up for your free VIP pass now at NCAA.com. For Steve Lapis, I'm Jason Horowitz. Enjoy the weekend. Take care, folks.